Hi, I'm Stephanie Gilmore. I'm the Curator of Collections here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. And as part of our Still Working on the Railroad video series, today I'm going to share with you my favorite object in the collection, which happens to be this dog collar. So first off, before we begin, you'll notice I'm wearing gloves. And the reason for that is to protect the collar from my fingerprints and the oils on my hands. So every museum object we treat with care and we always want to wear gloves so as not to damage it. So this collar is fascinating. Um, it's made of snake or alligator skin and silver and leather and brass. And it's my favorite object personally because I love dogs and I'm a huge animal lover. And the story behind this is just wonderful. So it dates to 1902 and it's, it belonged to a dog named Queen. Queen was owned by a farmer named Robert Wallace who lived on a farm near Marshall, which is near Boulder, Colorado. And one night in September of 1902, Queen started barking and just wouldn't stop. And this awakened Mr. Wallace and he went to see what all the fuss was about. Well, when he went outside, he discovered that the trestle bridge, which was a couple miles down from his farm, was on fire. And he knew that there would be a train coming sometime soon. So he went to the station agent and told him about the fire and then the station agent was able to flag down the engineer and thus stop the train from going over a burnt out trestle, which saved many lives and obviously kept the train from an enormous wreck. So the inscription on the collar is really great. It's from two people who I presume were passengers on the train. We're not really sure. We don't have a way to corroborate that. But it says, presented by Messrs. Frank and Dubois of New York City to Queen. The dog that aroused the man, that called the agent, that flagged the train, that stopped before the bridge that burned at Marshall, September 16, 1902. The more we see of men, the more we like dogs. So even if Queen was barking at a coyote or a cat or something on the farm, it doesn't matter. What she ended up doing was saving a train from disaster on that fateful night. So another interesting thing, another element of this story that is really interesting is that we were able to corroborate it through historical newspapers. Um, sometimes stories get overblown or changed through the years, so you may not know if it's actually a true story. Well, we found in the Longmont Ledger and the Salida Sentinel two articles that listed this incident. Um, one of them says, it was a wise dog that made his master get up and investigate very early on the morning of the 16th between Marshall and Boulder. The dog persisted, so the man got up and went out and discovered a railroad bridge on fire in time to go to the Marshall station and arouse the agent who flagged the train and saved 12 cars from a wreck. That dog ought to have a medal. Well, Mr. Frank and Mr. Dubois gave her this medal, and thankfully it ended up here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad to have shared my favorite object with you. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Nosick. I'm the Curator of Education and Exhibits at the Colorado Railroad Museum. My friend and colleague Stephanie, the collections curator, talked to you a little bit about Queen's Collar, a piece that's in our permanent collection. Well, today, me and my friend Spike here, we're going to show you how to make a collar for him. It should be a lot of fun. We're going to use all these wonderful things we found in our cupboard. Hope you can make one for yourself at home. The first thing that you need is a basic piece of paper or construction paper. The thicker it is, the better it is to work with. And a pair of scissors. I'm going to cut a narrow strip from my piece of paper. As you can see, I used a pair of scissors to cut just a fine strip that I think will fit around Spike's throat. 
Now, Queen had wonderful brads and, and um, things on its collar. I want to do some of those too. But I think the first thing we'll do is we'll put Spike's name on it. Can't really see this very well. This is what I had at home. You might actually want to have a marker or a crayon that you use to write on your dog collar. I also was looking at what did I have at home that might work really well to decorate my collar for Spike. And I had some fun things here at work. I had some stickers. I had googly eyes. I love googly eyes. And I had these foam cutout shapes. And these were just some of the things that I had at home. You may have buttons. You may have macaroni that's dried. You could have anything that you wanted. Pom-poms, whatever you could come into your imagination. It's time to glue on my googly eyes. And I'm going to make a googly collar. A googly eye collar. And I find if I press down on it nice and tight, it goes very well. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Now, you don't have to put a name on your dog's collar. You may just want to put googly eyes or buttons or stickers on your dog's collar. It's all up to you in your imagination. I think we need another one. If I had a white crayon, I could write Spike's name in white crayon. But isn't this fun? So I'm going to punch a hole right there. And you want to punch the hole so it's a little in from the paper's edge so that the the um, string we're going to use later doesn't pull it and break it. If you don't have a hole punch and you have a pencil, you can punch a hole into your dog collar with the pencil. Just be creative with how you use the things that you have at home. We're all having to be a little bit creative these days as we try to make things work. Now, I'm going to use the string to tie the dog collar together. Just one piece of string, however long I want. Probably shorter is better than longer in this situation. And the other thing I would point out is make sure you cover your glue because otherwise it will dry out and that will be sad. And I'm threading the string through and I am tying a knot. Now I had string Maybe you have a family person who knits or crochets, so you could use yarn. Or you might have twisty ties. Again, it's all about seeing how creative can you be. And now I'm going to put my collar on Spike. Our Spike is dressed as an engineer, a railroad engineer. But now, Spike gets to be as cool as Queen and have as neat a collar as Queen had. I'm just tying a knot here and back. <laughs> and now Spike has eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> See? There we go. And that's how you make a dog collar. Thank you so much.